We're here today to protest against the uh, the cuts announced by Boris Johnson and TfL. Nearly a thousand members are facing losing their job. Also, our members are facing cuts in wages as well. And as a union, we will not tolerate this. And along with our sister union, uh, Tessa, we will be taking action to defend jobs and conditions. The people who use the underground, A, your ticket offices are closing. I'm in the booking office at King's Cross. We have queues of 50 people, non-stop, one after another. And that's when we've got five windows open. And on the pumps, these machines that they think are miraculously going to help everybody, you've got queues of 50 people on them. You've got Eurostar, you've got all national rail trains coming in. You've got people here for a day, people here for a weekend. Loads of stuff, they've absolutely no idea. We're, we're uh, Russell Square is, for example, British Library, just, you know, five minute walk from here. You know, they need help with all that sort of stuff. Using the ticket machines, as a visually impaired person, uh, they're, they're not designed in a way that any visually impaired people can use. You're being expected to use money in open areas, but are not able to keep an eye on what else is going on around you. If you're a wheelchair user, you're having to concentrate, trying to reach up above uh, your normal seating level to be able to try and use these machines. Knowing that there are staff and trained staff on the underground is very, very important. And that's just the ticket machines. When it comes to actually using the network itself, they're watching me on CCTV to make sure that I'm coming out and, and reaching my destination. And knowing that level of security is there is very, very important. There's a 4.2% increase in the already high fares. It's one of the highest fare rates in the world. You've already got the poorest people in London using the buses rather than the tube. You look at one single journey now. We're here in King's Cross. They want to go, say, two stops. £4.50. £4.50. People from out of town and other countries, they cannot believe it. We try and, you know, orientate them away from £4.50 and say, look, you can do everything for, for this one and two that they're now cutting. People are forced from having a Zone 1 and 2 ticket that 99% of people use when they come into London, because everything's virtually in Zone 1 and 2, to being forced on a paper ticket for £8.90 is gone up 21.9%. 21.9% are forced into the oyster. A lot of people don't want the oyster, it fails, and then there ain't going to be stuff around to help them with it. You'll find on stations that every day machines go down, machines break down. What happens then? Where do the passengers go with no ticket office? To cut a thousand staff from a system that is carrying over four million passenger journeys a day, which is predicted to increase even up to around five million in the next decade, is ridiculous and scandalous, to be quite honest. We've had a ballot which has given a resounding yes vote for us to take industrial action to defend jobs and conditions. And that's a strike vote. And then you know, uh, an action short of strike, a overtime ban straight away, uh, what to rule straight away, etc. Boris, Boris, Boris! Out, out, out! Boris, Boris, Boris! Out, out, out! Boris! Out, out! Boris, Boris, Boris! Out, out, out! Advice for passengers using the future London Underground. Please ensure that you have a smart card and a bank card, and that both are loaded with plenty of money and topped up regularly. Please ensure you are thoroughly familiar with London Underground's 11 lines and 270 stations before travelling. Please ensure that the ticket machines are always working and that the gates always deduct the correct amount of money from your card. Please ensure that there are no delays to your journey, accidents, emergencies, incidents or evacuations. Please do not be alarmed if there are no staff on the station and no one driving your train. Please do not be disabled. <laughs> or poor or new to London. Please do not lose your property or your children. Please avoid being too young or too old. Please do not be harassed or assaulted while travelling. Please do not require assistance. Please understand that if you do not follow this advice, we may be unable to help you. Tough. Alternatively, please join the RMT fight to save London Underground's ticket offices, station staffing and space. around 10 and we've come and talked to us for 45 minutes about how the underground's been growing over the last 150 years, how it continues to, how performance continues to go up, 
our passengers coming through the door every day in more and more numbers spends three quarters of the meeting telling us that before he then turns around and talks about a thousand jobs being cut. You know, they're talking about 60% in the, in the GSM, DSM grid being cut, 45% of supervisors, and then at the lower grids, every ticket office to shut. There's people out there now, you know, actually I think it was where someone's done 5, 10, 15, 25 <laughs> years service, who are doing their job competently on a daily basis on those stations, who are now going to be told that you've got to reapply for your own job. If you're one of those people who are lucky enough to get a job, there's no guarantee that you're going to be in the station where you're going to be at, or the group where you're going to be at, or the grade that you're going to be at. It's basically saying your contracts no longer exist. I don't know what my wage structure is now, what my pension structure is, what my annual leave. Even in there it says discounted travel. It doesn't say free travel anymore. Every single aspect of our job and conditions has been attacked by this. These are the same people who are sacking 800 people and a few weeks after they finished doing that, they said, oh sorry, we made a mistake, we've got to go and employ a thousand people. You know, these are the same kind of management we're dealing with. Anyone believes out there that it's just an effect station grades is living the dream world. Because this bit of money that he's going to save goes nowhere near the 12.5% that he's got to save from central government year in, year out, for the next seven years. The savings that will be made by this particular policy are 6% of the total cuts the TfL needs to make. 6%. They've got to make 9.8 billion pounds worth of savings by the end of 2020. And on top of that, by the end of 2015-16, they have to make an extra 220 million pounds worth of savings. So where's he going to be looking at? They'll be looking for a wage freeze just like the rest of the public sector. And then they'll be looking at the pension fund. Know also that they're calling this attack fit for the future dash stations. Okay, now that's a very convenient dash because it enables them to produce another one in a few months' time, maybe, called fit for the future engineering, or fit for the future trains, or fit for the future fleet, or fit for the future service control, or fit for the future revenue control or fit for the future admin. Read it in the Evening Standard, because what the Evening Standard says, and it makes very clear, is that this round of job cuts is a first step towards a fully automated railway. We've already seen the prices on our engineering departments. They want 30% cuts in engineers. We can look at what's happening outside on network rail, and a very similar thing is called the McNulty Report, which advocates 25% job cuts, which advocates 30% pay cuts for anybody that's left, which advocates increasing casualisation. It's about the model of employment that they want to bring in. And that model of employment is zero hours contract, no holiday pay, statutory sick pay, and if you fall over and break your legs, it's good back. His old philosophy is to have a go at a particular grade right across the combine and serve notice that if he smashes those groups of grades, then he's coming for every other single group of grade after. London Underground, rather than cutting jobs, should challenge the government to put in cut. It should maintain or increase the level of station staffing and ticket office opening times and promote its own ticket selling services rather than those of external outlets. It should undertake a major programme <coughs> to make London Underground more accessible to disabled people and to those parts of London that it doesn't serve at the moment. It should return all contracted out areas of its work to London Underground, including cleaning, catering, ticket gate maintenance, advertising, infrastructure and fleet. It should curtail the overinflated salaries of its commissioner, its directors and others, and it should stop costly schemes designed to prepare for further job cuts, such as driverless trains. Now, I reckon I've saved them a load of money there. Yeah. <laughs> They've always been worried that we've got the strength to go in there and call <coughs> industrial action to get it if need be, either by through threatening it or through taking it. And I've got to say to your brothers this time, I don't think a threat's going to turn this block back. I think the only way we're going to stop this lot now is physically taking industrial action. We need to step up the ante. It needs to be a lot longer. It needs to really hurt them, to really get them to stand up, really start to listen and stop, you know, just the 24-hour strikes in terms of our tactics. They're pre preparing for that. They're ready for that. So we've got to make sure that there's something that they're not ready for. I've been on this job 36 years. 
And I'm not having some fucking Etonian tell me what's good for London Underground and what ain't. But the reality is this one. I'm going to tell Johnson here tonight for his spies and Brown and Duffy, you can stick your document right up your fucking arse.